Hello and welcome to the part 2 of the Arduino Quadcopter tutorial series. To me this is the most important video of the whole series as we go over the wiring connection. So please uh, stay tuned. Okay guys, so we'll go over the wiring connection and I'm going to explain you uh, uh, how I wired each and everything on my Arduino Quadcopter. So we're going to start from the bottom left here. So right over here I have the 3300 milliampere hours lipo pack. So this is the three cell lipo battery that I'm using for my drone. It goes to this XT60 female connector. There's an XT60 male connector over here. So this is again, you know, it's sort of like a plug and play and you can connect these both connectors and, and it should be okay. Um, and then from this XC60 male connector, I have this diode. Um, and I'll explain about this diode in a, in a moment. From this diode, again, we have this XC60 male connector right over here. Okay. Now, the I have all these connectors here because, you know, I simply, you know, I simply wanted to make it a plug and play operation for most of the guys who are doing this for the first time. Now, if you are an experienced um, you know, person who you know can solder the wires, you can make these electric connections easily. You don't need all this plastic, right? I mean, this is you know all these connectors, all these connectors. They're just extra plastic. You know, they're just adding on to the weight of the quad copter. Um, if you are new and you don't want to be, uh, you know, wiring, you know, soldering wires or, or, or you know, different connectors together, uh, you can you can go with these, uh, you know, these connectors and it should be okay. Uh, alternatively, you can completely remove this and have these wires soldered together. Um, so that's one thing, you know, if you if you if you want to go like that. Um, from this XT60 male, I have the XT60 splitter. So what it does is basically it it makes uh, it creates this voltage junction. So I have two different voltage outputs from here. Um, you know, one this and the other one right over here. And the reason I have this splitter is because I'm powering up my Arduino board from the same lipper pack, which is also powering my motors. So I'm only using one power source. I'm not using two different power sources. I'm using one power source, which is the lipo pack, to power up the Arduino and the and the motors. And that so and that's why I have this XC60 splitter. I want to I want to split that power source into two different power sources. One of this power source, right over here. You know, this power source goes to this Arduino power. Okay, so one again, one of the power source powers up the Arduino board, and the other power source, which is this one, is powering up these motors to the you know to the uh, ESCs. So so that's why I have this XT60 splitter. Okay, the reason I have this diode um, is because first, if I'm coding. The Arduino Uno board, you know, when I'm when I'm programming it, I'm obviously I'm obviously connecting it to my computer, and um, you know I'm powering it up with the USB port, which is right over here, right? However, um, I don't every time I program it, I don't want to remove all these connections, right? It's just it's just a tedious task, um, and so I have this diode placed here so that there's no back current that flows into this. Okay, again, remember diode for all those electrical uh, people who are familiar with electrical components. A diode is something um, you know which prevents any back current. So it only allows current in one direction. So that's why whenever I power the board using the um, uh, USB port over here, this diode prevents any back current from flowing from this side. You know, and going into these motors. So that's one thing. One of the reasons why I have this diode. The second reason I have this diode is because the input voltage 
for the Arduino Uno board is a recommended 7 to 12 volts. And if you go online on the website, you will see the recommended voltages 7 to 12 volts. When this lipo pack is fully charged, you know, when this lipo pack is fully charged, it's giving me 12.6 volts. You know, now if you again read the um, uh, if you again read the data sheet of this board, you will see that the Arduino board can take up to 20 volts, but really, really the recommended maximum voltage is 12 volts. So what this diode does is because this specific diode has a voltage drop of 0.6 volts. That's why when, when any voltage that's coming out from this diode is 12.6 minus 0 0.6, which is 12 volts, which is within the recommended maximum voltage for the Arduino Uno microcontroller. So that's the second reason. You know, first is that it prevents any back current. And the second is there's a voltage drop so that the voltage that's going into my Arduino Uno board is 12 volts. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, then from this uh, from this power source, you know, it goes into the wire harness box. So I have, again, I have a, this sort of again, uh, a splitter. You know, uh, I have one positive, one negative going into this and coming out as four positives and four negatives. And all these four positives and four negatives are thereby going into the ESCs. So an ESC is an electronic speed controller. So all these are connecting to the ESC right over here. Okay, so that's very basic, you know, positive, negative, positive, negative. You see your ESC and there's a there's a red and black wire. You connect that to these. There you go, you're done. Okay. On to then, after you've connected the positive and negative to the ESCs, you have three cables that come out. One is the red, one is yellow, and one is black in most cases. Uh, they are positive, so red is positive, black is negative, and this is signal. Okay, so this is signal. I don't know if I don't let it that good, but you get the idea. The red is positive, black is negative, yellow is signal. So if you, you know, when you look at your motor, and any RC uh, outrunner motor will have three cables coming out of it. One black, one black, one red, and one yellow or orange. Uh, you connect that to your ESC using the the bullet connectors. Okay, They're, it comes pre-mounted. That's it. The connection to your motors is complete. The next thing is the back output. Now every ESC has an has a has an output. It may be back. It may not be back. What back means, you know, back stands for battery eliminator circuit. And what BEC means is that you can power other components using the BEC output. So usually in an, in an RC aircraft, you would power your RC receiver using that BEC output. But in this case, since you're already powering everything else using this LiPo pack, we don't really need this BEC output, the, the, the power component of this BEC output. So what we really need is the signal from this BEC output. So that signal wire is maybe an orange or again a yellow uh, color wire for me it was orange um, and that's a jumper cable so you can take the back out you take the, the signal from each of the motors or so, so from each of the escs and you connect to the digital pin four five six and seven on your uh, arduino microcontroller okay pretty simple you follow the step you you'll uh, you'll understand it Next thing is your, um, so you, you again, you're powering up the Arduino microcontroller from this power source. Okay, so that makes, that's okay, that's pretty simple. Next thing is your gyroscope. So I have an MPU6050 gyroscope. The VCC from the gyroscope 
if you follow this red line it's a red color it, go, it, it is going into the 5 volt output on your microcontroller okay so you have the 5 volt powering up this gyroscope if you notice this 5 volt is also so this 5 volt is going right over here and powering up this if you notice this 5 volt is also powering up sorry I'm just going to draw it again this 5 volt is also powering up your receiver okay so this 5 volt output is powering up two things it is powering up your gyroscope and it is powering up your um, your receiver okay pretty straightforward this receiver this red wire goes into an auxiliary power on your uh, on your receiver okay now anything you know obviously anything that that will have power will have ground right so the gyroscope ground goes to the ground pin on your on your Arduino microcontroller so you see there's a ground pin right over here you're connecting this ground pin right to this ground pin on your gyroscope again pretty straightforward um, and similarly the negative negative also means ground okay if you if, if, if just to just to clarify that so the negative from the receiver is also connecting to the ground on this on, on, on your Arduino microcontroller so again you know, I have two grounds here I have this ground port and I have these two different ground ports right so I have three total ground ports um, so this ground port I'm taking that and I'm connecting it to this negative on your receiver okay so the powering up of your gyroscope and receiver are complete okay the next thing is the SEL SEL is the clock point um, of the gyroscope this SEL connects to this port right over here this port is also SEL okay and this SDA which is the data connects to this port right over here so if you follow this SDA goes right over here okay and this SEL goes right over here all right okay uh, after that, the only thing that's that's left to to connect is your receiver channel inputs. So again, channel one is throttle, aileron, elevator, and rudder. Okay. So on this receiver, you connect your channel one to your digital pin eight, channel two to digital pin nine, channel three to digital pin ten, and channel four to digital pin eleven okay so right over here so channel 1 2 3 4 digital pin 8 9 10 11 you make these respective jumper connections and you're pretty much set that is the main this is the main wiring connection that you need for your quad quarter the other thing i have is this low voltage status indicator now this is again something if you want to have you can have it if you don't want to you don't really need to have it but what i have here is a one kilo volt ohm uh, resistor and a 1.5 kilo sorry a one kilo ohm resistor and a 1.5 kilo ohm resistor um, connecting parallel and then it's connecting to the analog input zero and i've programmed in my code to use this analog input zero as a voltage indicator so whenever the voltage goes below it, it it tells me that you know the voltage has gone below and then it it indicates that through an LED and the LED is this okay so I have a 330 ohm resistor which connects to a red LED and then goes into this ground pin and the digital pin 12 so I sit what I basically what I'm saying that detect the voltage that's at a0 if any of that voltage goes below a certain value indicate that to me via digital pin 12 which is nothing but just this led okay so i hope this makes sense uh, these are your uh, your uh, motor orientations your front right counterclockwise rear right clockwise rear left counterclockwise and front left clockwise direction motors uh, if you connect it like that so um, yeah that that's that's the you know pretty much 
everything I have on my quadcopter. I'm strictly following this. I have nothing more on my quadcopter than what's shown here. Okay, so if you follow this diagram, if you follow my other videos, you'll, you'll get an idea of how to connect uh, everything, uh, you know, using the jumper cables, you know, what stuff needs to go where. Um, and, and that's it, you know, that's, that would be pretty much your, your full complete hardware connection. So I'll see you in my other videos where I'll explain you the, uh, the joining of the, um, you know, all these components and then assembling and then, the, you know, the first test flight. Stay tuned. Thank you.